Hi everyone, my name is Camilla and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I make travel videos here on YouTube. If you've been following me for a while, you know I'm a big foodie. One of my favorite things to do when I visit new places is to go hunting for the best food on offer. Being a vegan for over 10 years, I've seen a massive change in the food scene and most places now offer great vegan options. In today's episode, I'm taking you guys on a food tour around the Caribbean island of St. Thomas. We have been there four times over the last few years, so I'm excited to show you all the different places you can visit when you go. I also asked the community on the St. Thomas Facebook group if they could send me their favorite restaurants, that way you'll have even more trustworthy options. I will include the answers from the locals and the veteran St. Thomas travelers at the end of this video. And don't worry, this food guide will include something for everyone. Non-vegans, vegans, gluten-free, etc. But okay, before we start, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. With all that said, let's finally jump into today's episode. Starting off with number one, my favorite restaurant on the whole island, Lanai Restaurant at Lime Tree Beach. This beachfront restaurant offers a contemporary fusion food and I guarantee there is something for everyone on their incredibly tasty menu. We were in St. Thomas in January and we ate there three times in one week. They have great my, vegan options my. as well. I usually get the Pacific stir fry with tofu and a side of their crispy edamame. John and them usually had some sort of seafood or tacos. Lanai also have great frozen drinks and I always had the strawberry decorate. Another big selling point is their location. It's situated on the beachfront of the Lime Tree Beach Resort. The space is beautiful both during the day and at night. Make sure to make reservations, it was always fully booked when we were there. Basically all the restaurants in St. Thomas now have limited capacity, so always make reservations. Number 2 is Limeout, a floating taco boat in Coral Harbor, St. John. It's out of the way, but it's too good to miss out on. This floating taco boat offers, of course, tasty tacos and great drinks. They even had vegan gluten-free options. Are you guys living your best life? Yes! <laughs> I honestly couldn't believe it when our Captain Christian told us a floating taco boat in the middle of the Caribbean Ocean offering vegan tacos, I was sold. This place is cool for so many reasons. Another one is that they're super eco-friendly as well. They operate with 100% solar power, only use reusable cups and biogradable containers. This is totally worth a visit if you're cruising around in that area. Number three is the beautiful restaurant Mirador. It's such a scenic view from this restaurant. It's located on a cliffside next to the Point Pleasant Resort. They offer international cuisines and outstanding service. This is actually where John and I got the best service of all the restaurants we've been to in the USVI. They didn't have any vegan options on the menu, but the chef made up something for me and it was delicious. So I got vegetable risotto, extra passion fruit hot sauce. What did you get? It's called turbot. It's a fish. Oh, it's like white fish, kind of like cod. And look at our view. We have the moon, we have stars. Here too, make sure to make your reservation before because they only have limited capacity. So moving on to number 4, Prime at Paradise Point. This is probably one of the most famous and upscale restaurants St. Thomas has to offer. I know I said the view at the Mirador was great, but the view at Prime is even better. Since it's a traditional steakhouse, we called in advance and asked for vegan options for me and they said no problem at all and made me some great baked peppers with veggies and risotto. The atmosphere here was great. You could feel the quality of the food, wine, and presentations. But yeah, 
this place is definitely more expensive than other restaurants on the island. Aside from that, we had a great time and our waiters Jason and Christy were super cool. Number 5 is a fun one, Duffy's Love Shack. We always go here when we visit St. Thomas. It's such a cool place in Red Hook that offers bar food, good drinks and some crazy shops. You mostly go there for a good time not to have a Michelin star meal. Their staff is great and we always have a good time with Steven. They have proclaimed themselves the best parking lot bar in the world. And I have to agree, I've never been to a cooler parking lot bar. <laughs> Number six is Denton's Island Steakhouse. So we're outside Denton's Steakhouse right now, and I just want to show you quickly how it looks like outside and how it looks like inside. It's really, really cute, and as I said earlier, the service is great. But uh, yeah, let me show you how you get to the restaurant. Yes, it might be weird that a vegan includes a steakhouse in my list, but they do offer vegan options. And it's not always feasible to bring a whole group to 100% vegan restaurants. So Denton's is located in the same space as the Lanai restaurant, so at Lime Tree Beach. They're all so close that they actually share a kitchen, and that's why they can be flexible with their menu. If you go, make sure to look out for Brendan. He's an absolute legend and gave us the best service and great travel tips. This is Brendan. He, he's like the main, main host of this restaurant. He runs this town. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the proper way to say the name of where we are right now? I see you at Denton's Island Steakhouse. We are open from Tuesday through Saturday from 5 o'clock till 9.30. Yeah, so you better come make a reservation because it gets packed. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> And we're just staying here till it's closing, so that's why it's empty. <laughs> we refuse to leave. <laughs> Number seven is a beautiful restaurant called Old Stone Farmhouse. This is such a unique place. It's an upscale restaurant serving Caribbean flavors for food lovers in a 1750s stable. They also had a great vegetarian menu that they could veganize. Their wine selection is also incredible. You should visit just for the wine. Definitely worth a visit if you want more of a food experience. Getting closer to the end, number eight is the Easterly. This is another beautiful restaurant with great decor. Everything from the tiling on the floor to the fabric on their couches are well thought out. The Easterly is mainly focused on seafood, but offers a lot of other options too, including vegan options. This is gonna look good on your YouTube. This is what people will sign in to YouTube to see. Your world, this is very nice. Your world is about to change. Not as interesting. Yeah, like we want that. <laughs> Are you guys happy? Like, come on, come on. Look at this. <laughs> Camilla, I know you're vegan, but I, I, and I love you, and I try to be vegan, but this is amazing. Good. What is it? What you get? Lobster. No. The I got like the, um, the capture of the Best game. Vegetarian's good enough. Oh, yes, fish. baby. And something. Good job. That's what she told me. Their proudest possession, though, are their beverages. They claim to offer the most innovative craft cocktail with a Caribbean twist. I have to say, I really did enjoy my cocktail. Number 9 is Pesche Italian. I'm only including this because I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt as our service there was regrettable, but our waiter might have just had a bad day. We had a reservation at 9 o'clock and we have to wait a little bit. It's a lot of people here or because of COVID they're half capacity so we have to make reservations. But uh, I just ordered some pasta, they made it vegan so I'm waiting for that. I'll let you know if it's good or not. But uh, yeah, I'll show you real quick how it looks like. It's very cute inside, so I'll show you. And it's also located right here in Red Hook. So you have all the bars 
you have duffies and all of them up there. So after you're done eating, you can go and drink. But yeah, I'll show you. I was not happy with my food there, but John and the others were very satisfied. Nothing extraordinary though. They did, however, have a vegan and gluten-free pasta, which was a big plus. Number 10 is just to explore the local food stands. As a vegan, I can't talk too much about this because the ones I tried to find were closed down because of COVID. But John found a fun one and the owner and the people hanging out outside were super nice. Yeah, you're Maria. 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 Wait, only got juice in it. No. <laughs> So that was a lie. <laughs> it wasn't only juice. What was in it? How was it? I like it. You can find some great places just by walking around with an open mind. But of course, always be mindful of your surroundings. We love your place. And it's got rum in it, right? Cool. What did you get? Just rice and beans with uh, chicken. I don't eat chicken that much these days, but you know. Gotta, it's gotta just when you, when you see a cool local spot, you just want to like support. Yeah. They were really fun. They were super cool. And now, now I'm a little drunk. <laughs> so as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I wanted to include all the messages I got from my fellow travelers and locals who live there. After posting to the St. Thomas Travel Facebook group on Wednesday, I got so many messages and recommendations. I think it was over 50 recommendations. Some of these people have been traveling to St. Thomas for over 20 years, so I 100% trust their recommendations. I tried to include all of them so you guys have even more places to choose from. So there you have it guys, I hope none of you watched today's episode on an empty stomach, that might have been too painful but I really hope you find this little food guide helpful. If you've been to any of these restaurants, let me know. I would love to hear your experiences. If I missed any places, please comment below too so we can all have access to them. As I mentioned in my last video, the Virgin Islands are still open for travel. You just have to provide a negative COVID test and respect all the rules regarding masks and social distancing. It's been a hard year for everyone and especially small businesses, so the more you eat your way around the island, the better it is for their local economy. Order that extra side dish and tip extra, we know they deserve it. But okay friends, I will let you go now. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already done that, it really helps my channel out a lot. Thank you so much for watching, I'm so grateful for all of you. Bon appetit and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!